Good evening, everybody. My name is Saman Golistan, uh, local attorney, uh, member of the board of directors and chairman of our membership program of the Iranian American Society of Arizona and your host this evening for the Persian Cult Arizona Persian Cultural Center's webinar series. Uh, as you know, the IASAZ is a 501c3 social welfare and educational organization that promotes Iranian art and culture and interconnectedness through uh, community service projects. Uh, we are a non-political, non-religious, non-profit organization. Uh, before we get to tonight's speaker, I want to make a quick note about some upcoming events. As uh, you know, that most of our events are, are now virtual. Um, we do have calligraphy and Daryush classes weekly. Uh, every Monday night at 7 p.m., we are co-hosting uh, events with the South Bay Persian Heritage Foundation. These are Zoom sessions. Uh, the topics of these talks also tend to be scientific and medical. Uh, the center has, has resumed doing some in-person activities, including family fun days outdoors every fourth Sunday of the month at El Dorado Park Community Center from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Please visit IASAZ.org or find us on Facebook for more information. Tonight's topic is about brain health, uh, a very timely topic for many of us in our community it was not too long ago that one of our very own uh, dear volunteers uh, had passed, has passed away from dementia. Uh, we hope that, uh, that all of our viewers, our members, our volunteers, and others in the community find this talk to be very helpful. Uh, tonight, we are joined by Dr. Bobak Nayari. Welcome, Dr. Nayari. Thank you for taking the time to join with us. Uh, Dr. Nayari is a clinical associate professor at the University of Arizona College of Medicine. Uh, he is a scientific research associate at the University of Arizona Center on Aging, an adjunct professor with the University of Arizona of the College of Public Health, a scientific member of the CDC National Healthy Brain Research Network, a faculty fellow at the ASU Center for Innovation in Healthy and Resilient Aging, and uh, the chairman of the Attorney General's Health and Safety Committee. Again, welcome Dr. Nayari and thank you for taking the time to join us and, and educate us about a very timely and important subject. Thank you, Mr. Golasan, for that warm introduction. Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's a privilege to be with all of you tonight, and thank you for the invitation to uh, share this information and help raise awareness in our community. So today I'm going to, or tonight, this evening, I'm going to be talking about brain health, and uh, the center of the focus is going to be dementia. Uh, uh, so in Farsi, it, uh, you know, although sometimes we refer to it as Faramushi, uh, it, it's really Zawal Aq. So I will be presenting this uh, lecture, or this information in English, but uh, hopefully we will have an opportunity to respond to our uh, Persian community, our Farsi speaking uh, so let's begin. Uh, let me just share with you about this organ that is really the central processing in our, uh, in our is a central processing organ in our skull, right? And it's like the hard drive in the computer uh, with all the uh, information that's stored in there. So in, it's interesting to share that uh, there are about 250,000 nerve cells that are developed per minute. That's an average per minute throughout the course of a pregnancy. So our brain begins to develop and the nerve cells begin to grow at 250,000 per minute in the brain. And neurons are, so I'll be talking about neurons in case you're wondering, neurons are designed to transmit information to other nerve cells, muscles, gland cells, uh, so on and so forth. And neurons are cells within the nervous system that uh, transmit information to other nerve cells, again, muscles, gland cells, and most neurons have a cell body and axon and dendrites. So just uh, don't worry about all these terms, just for your mind to be aware and be, get familiar with it. 
it's uh, like uh, uh, cables of wires or, or uh, uh, you know, uh, ways that the brain and the body uh, communicate through electrical uh, impulses. So I already shared with you that the brain is a central processing system. We talked about a little bit about the anatomy of the brain. Uh, I'd like to start with some fa fun facts and uh, would like your participation as I ask some of these questions. Don't you love that uh, gentleman uh, on the right-hand side, left-hand side, if you're looking at the screen, you know, that, that's the spirit of having fun, spirit of aging. So I would like to ask you the first question and uh, our host who is diligently working in the background, Mr. Skandarion, if you would put the first question into the chat box, is aging or is dementia a normal part of aging? And if you would, uh, please respond if you can. Uh, I'm not sure if you can do that on uh, Facebook, Facebook Live, but if you're on uh, the Zoom, and if you can on the Facebook Live, please put your responses in the chat box so we can participate together and interact. And then I'll be asking some additional questions later on. Oh, great. So we have a live poll here. So. Uh, we have nine, well, again, the counter is counting. So if you would, please put your responses on there and we'll be able to see the responses live. Do we have, okay, very good. So 100%, have, go ahead and end the poll, please. And then we can share the results. So 50% of you have said, that dementia is a normal part of aging and 50% have said it is not. So very good, I uh, appreciate your participation in this part of the poll and I will be asking you some other questions. So let's see, all right, I think if you could, do I share the results? There we go, okay, so I guess I should have, uh, I'm not sure who's in control of the Poll, but I'm sharing the results there in transparency, 50-50. So I'm gonna stop this and I'm not sure if you, Mr. Skander, I, I have lost uh, control of the slide advancement. So I don't know if you need to give me back the hosting. There we go, okay. All right, so is, dementia, a normal part of aging. And we will be talking about uh, dementia and various forms of dementia in more detail. But what is normal aging? Let's talk about that. And uh, I wanna, this, these are some photos of uh, a mother who's been taken, was taken by Tony uh, Luciani. And uh, he, this is his mother actually, who was suffering from a form of dementia and uh, he this became his project so I always love to share these very uh, graphic very uh, story uh, very you know uh, awesome pictures that uh, tell a lot of stories if you just look at them so uh, normal aging involves independence in uh, our daily activities and or otherwise some people may know them, know them as activities of daily living. Uh, you know, we may, in a normal aging process, we may complain about memory and, uh, you know, there, there are instances where we, when we forget things, uh, there may be uh, some recent memory that uh, is intact, but uh, sometimes uh, the, some of the uh, most, uh, immediate memories tend to be forgotten. And, and no, but it's a normal part of performance as, as a person ages. And if we were to assess the individual's mental status by asking certain questions, 
uh, they would be able to perform normally. So in normal aging, uh, we also have our intelligence is intact and remain, remains intact. There are principal, some principal changes in the normal aging, and those are, again, general slowing of the cognition uh, or, or thinking and the performance of our cognition or thinking. There is uh, some mental flexibility uh, that decreases with aging, and uh, there may be some, uh, you know, that we may find some new uh, ways of solving problems. So at old, we use old solutions to solve problems instead of new ways of so, uh, solving problems. There may be some uh, mild difficulty finding words and uh, you know, names, places, objects, uh, name, you know, people that we uh, perhaps knew and then know, but uh, it's, it's, we are slower in recognizing them or remembering their name. And there is a mild decrease in our working memories so or active memory. Uh, we can you know, manipulate the information mentally. So, but you know, using, uh, for example, working a math problem uh, in our head, uh, uh, we can manipulate that and, and still have come up with answers. And sometimes, again, we have some sporadic or, or transient forget forgetfulness. Some people re uh, nowadays refer to that as senior moments, which is, uh, you know, a poor term describing what happens with normal aging. Um, in normal aging, uh, again, people forget the name of a person, perhaps. Uh, they have difficulty um, multitasking quickly, you know, especially nowadays when we are all uh, inundated with tasks and we are, there's so much demand in uh, performing multiple tasks. Uh, when as we age, that slows down. And uh, so uh, we may not be able to multitask as quickly as we used to. And there may be some delays in our responsiveness. Now, in uh, the difference with uh, in dementia is that mem there are memory problems and there are difficulty, uh, for example, naming close family members. So it's one thing to uh, forget the name of a person that uh, maybe we are we acquainted with, we had met a while back, but it's another when we forget the name of a family member, right? So there are problems with executive functions. Uh, and what, what are those executive functions? For example, uh, balancing our checkbook, paying bills uh, on our own. Uh, so we need help. Some, we, need to have, we need to have somebody who can help us do that. There may be confusion with time and the place. And there's a tendency for people with dementia to get lost. There are language challenges. So there may be difficulty communicating. Uh, we, may, we may have difficulty communicating our thoughts. And there is a decrease in uh, sound judgment. So there, our judgment can be kind of questionable as uh, uh, the, the, the dementia stages of dementia advance. And we'll talk about that again in more detail. Uh, some of this is potentially uh, reversible, but unlikely. In Alzheimer's, which is one form of dementia, again, we'll be talking about this in uh, more detail, uh, there's, the symptoms are similar to dementia as in general, uh, there, but there, plus there's memory loss of recent events. For example, conversation in the same day, uh, when you have, you just spoke with somebody, if I speak with uh, Mr. Golestan, uh, if I spoke with him earlier this morning, I may not remember what we talked about. And there may be changes in the personality. Uh, for example, there may be interest in social, there may be no interest in social events. A uh, person may become agitated in certain uh, social events and interactions. And the may, person may get really depressed. Um, and we're talking about the, uh, clinical depression, not uh, some, some not, not a sadness and brooding, and someone who has a depressed mood that they can uh, transition out of. So it's more of a clinical depression. 
And the, the behavior and mood changes are, uh, are seen and observed later on in later stages of Alzheimer's. And unfortunately, uh, I hate to be the bearer of uh, bad news, but there is no cure for Alzheimer's. As of this moment that I'm speaking with you, there, are, there is no cure. So let me see, I'm still not able to advance the slides. I don't know why. Uh, Mr. Skandarian, could you see if you can advance the slide? I, it's not letting me advance the slide. Or Mr. Gulistan, I'm not sure either one of you. I think that I still see the poll, uh, the first poll question on my screen. I don't know why that is. Uh, let me see if I can. Okay, I closed it. Let me see if that will. Nope, I still can't advance this slide. And I apologize for the technical challenges. Uh, I trust that. Uh, so I can, I can uh, maybe stop. Okay. I think maybe I can try and stop your share and then you can restart because I can't advance them either. Okay. I'll stop the share and I'll re-share. How about that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I apologize, but we're going to have to go through Okay, we talked about normal aging versus abnormal aging or not normal aging already. Uh, so, you know, we, we, we have different images of what people who age should look like and whether, you know, that they are probably inactive and sedentary. That's not always the case. And let's talk about the nervous system and the behavior. So we know that the, there are physical and chemical processes that uh, lead to our behaviors. So how the nervous system marshals its signaling units in, the, in to direct behavior is what, uh, how behaviors are manifested or, or displayed. Um, so how we perceive the world around us, how we learn from experience, how we remember, how we direct our movements and how we communicate with each other are all behaviors and reflections of the function of the nervous system. The brain being a huge part of that process. The, so the organized and coordinated activity of the nervous system that ultimately manifests itself in the behavior of organism is uh, what we are most concerned with when there are behavioral changes. Let me see. So there, here are some, a list of some nervous system diseases uh, that I think it's important for us to at least uh, be familiar with. There are a lot of jargons and terminologies that I don't expect anybody to uh, know uh, by heart, but uh, you know, Alzheimer's disease, chronic pain, uh, Down syndrome, uh, and depressive disorders, ep epilepsy, uh, or people who have seizure disorders, hearing loss, Huntington's disease, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, schizophrenia, stroke, traumatic brain injury, some people refer to it as TBI, or um, uh, closed head injuries, traumatic spinal cord injuries. These are all nervous system this disease and disorders that can uh, play a role in uh, as, as risk factors. So, uh, and some of these we'll be talking about in more detail. So let's talk about memory loss. Uh, there are non-dementia conditions that cause memory loss. There are, you know, a neoplast there can be a neoplastic uh, disorder which, or disease, uh, or in other words, brain tumor. Uh, there can be, again, traumatic brain injuries. There can be endocrine or uh, this or is, you know, with uh, the endocrine ha manages all the hormones, uh, hormonal functions in our body <clears throat> and mind. So uh, hypothyroidism, the thyroid not functioning uh, normally uh, is it can cause uh, memory loss, uh, episodic seizures, and even migraine headaches can cause memory loss. There are also neurodegenerative, uh, uh, in other words. Uh, 
degeneration or uh, deterioration of the nerves uh, known as hunt, such as Huntington disease, as I mentioned in the previous slide, that can also lead to memory loss. In addition to dementia, um, memory loss can result from uh, a lot of variety of conditions. That's why it's important, and um, we'll talk about uh, the, the significance of being evaluated uh, thoroughly, comprehensively, and finding differential diagnosis. So vascular uh, conditions such as stroke, uh, hypoxic injury after cardiac arrest, hypoxic meaning not getting enough uh, oxygen to the brain uh, after a cardiac arrest, infections, infectious diseases such as herpes, sim, herpes simplex, uh, syphilis, HIV, those can also cause uh, memory loss, toxic uh, materials or chemicals such as alcohol and alcoholism, medication overdoses, uh, uh, other neurotoxins such as benzene, which is uh, used uh, significantly in Iran. Um, so benzene has uh, been known to uh, make, bring about changes in the brain. Bleach, um, some perfumes that, are, uh, that we people use uh, can cause neurotoxicity, in other words, there are toxins to the nervous nerves in, and the neurons in the brain. Uh, there are autoimmune conditions and there are metabolic conditions uh, such as B12, vitamin B12 uh, deficiencies and electrolyte imbalances that can cause memory uh, problems. So again, memory, when we talk about memory loss, uh, I'm not talking about uh, those of us who forget where we put the uh, car key, for example. Okay, uh, that happens to uh, many people and that's normal. Or uh, if we forget uh, where we parked our car in the parking lot, uh, those are normal. Uh, what is not normal uh, would be like if I put my shoes in the refrigerator or if I park my car uh, on the lawn of somebody's uh, home and I forget where it is. So that's, those are the types of memory losses that are not normal. So let me talk about, let's talk about dementia. Dementia uh, or zavol ag, not forgetfulness because people, we all forget. Uh, but it's, it's the severity and the timeline and how it impacts our functioning that is important when it comes to evaluation and diagnosis of what is going on with an individual. So we know that uh, Alzheimer's is, about, uh, compri is comprised of 60 to 70% of uh, dementias. And so it's the most common form of dementia. So Alzheimer's is only one of over 100 different types of dementias. And let me see, I, I don't know why this poll keeps popping up and then it, it interferes with my ability to advance the slide. Uh, let's see. Okay, I apologize, but I'm gonna to have to stop again. And uh, Mr. Skanderian, could you, is it possible for you to stop uh, the polling function altogether for now? I'm going to go ahead and- Yeah, I'll stop the polling. Yeah, I'll go ahead and Thank stop. Thank you, because it just keeps popping up. All right. So, Again, dementia uh, is basically failure in the brain. Uh, so if our hard, the hard drive in our computer stop functioning, stop working, it, can't, it can no longer access information and bring up information, that's in, 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 a, on a, in a not so fair uh, description, uh, or descriptive way of saying, you know, the, the, that's what dementia is for us in our brain. So the, it's, telling us uh, like the check engine light in our cars, 
uh, that there is something going on and the person's brain is gradually dying. So as I said that, you know, according to Adams, the majority of dementias, uh, about 60%, 60 to 65% of them are uh, dementia, uh, Alzheimer's related dementia. Then there is vascular dementia. Uh, vascular dementia has to do with the uh, blood flow and the circulation in the brain caused by a heart attack and a lack of oxygen to the brain that damages the brain cells. So that would be the vascular type dementia. Dementia does not equal Alzheimer's and does not equal memory problems. So that's the difference between Alzheimer's and dementia. Uh, not all types of uh, dementias equal, equal to a memory loss. As I said there, we said earlier that there are neoplastic or brain tumor causes. There is Pick's disease, there's vascular dementia, Lewy body disease, and Alzheimer's disease. These are some of the common, five most common types of dementia. So it affects at least two parts of the brain uh, when there's death, cell death occurs and it's chronic usually and it cannot be fixed. There is no cure for uh, those dead brain cells. It's progressive and it will worsen over time. And oftentimes it can be terminal. Let, we'll, talk about uh, how Alzheimer's or dementia can be terminal. They can, they're not uh, primarily the cause of death, but uh, hopefully I, uh, keep me honest, uh, Mr. Goldstone, and remind me if I forget to talk about that, why, you know, how does dementia cause death? So let's talk about uh, Alzheimer's in more detail. So Alzheimer's in the United States is the sixth leading cause of death, chronic disease cause of death. But in Arizona, unfortunately, we're, we're the fourth, uh, in our state, it's the fourth leading cause of death among men 65 years and older, and the third leading cause of death, a chronic disease cause of death among women. 65 years and older, and more so uh, among those who are 80 years and older. So aging is a factor, but it doesn't necessarily mean that everybody who ages will develop dementia, and we, we all know that. Not everybody who is aged, you know, we know people who live up to 101 years of age and their faculties are intact, their memory is intact. So in, uh, this is something that I think it's significant uh, when we look at it epidemiologically. If you look at the counties in Arizona, the counties that are in, in a darker shade of purple have the highest number of Alzheimer's related deaths per 100,000. And you see those counties, and I'll be sharing some additional uh, epidemiological data with other conditions that it may, so keep a, keep a snapshot of this in your memory, if you will. And when you, we look at those other uh, slides that I'll share, you'll see some patterns in, be, between Alzheimer's and some other disease. So again, talking about Alzheimer's disease, Many, there are many changes that occur in the brain uh, as a result of Alzheimer's disease. There is a presence of uh, plaques, for example, and you see uh, these are, there are some tangles, we call them, and uh, there are tangles and plaques, and although it was believed for many years uh, that plaques and tangles caused the many symptoms of Alzheimer's. There is no research that indicates that although these are present, uh, there may be other prior processes which play an integral 
role in the pro progression of Alzheimer's disease, which begin before these biomarkers, the tangles and, and the plaques are, can be seen in the brain. And so there, there can be neural uh, fibrility tangles that are, uh, that, uh, that are caused by abnormal processing of the protein called tau. This, this protein in the brain, when there's, it's abnormal, at abnormal levels, it can cause or, or, or increase the risk of Alzheimer's. And there are other tau protein uh, changes chemically that uh, can cause, uh, that can either unravel and, or clump together and cause uh, memory cognitive problems. And although acetylcholine, uh, can, another important chemical messenger in the brain uh, that again helps uh, those uh, synapses and the neurons and nerve cells to communicate with one another, there, there tends to be a, a decrease in the production of acetylcholine. And that's caused by the enzyme, that's caused by that enzyme. So acetylcholine can cause that. And uh, there is usually less amount of it or production of it at the nerve uh, receptive impulses uh, by the at the nerve cells. There is also degeneration in the hippocampus area of the brain. We'll talk about that. And this area of the brain is responsible for learning and new memory. That's why it's difficult for people with uh, dementias to, especially Alzheimer's type of dementia to learn new things and uh, remember uh, or uh, create new memories. So the analogy uh, that uh, I would use uh, would be again, uh, if the hard drive in our computer uh, is, is, has aged or has been damaged and it cannot access information uh, because those certain sectors in the, in the hard drive are corrupted, that uh, is what happens with our brain. So if I asked you today what day it is, and you told me it's, uh, I think it's Sunday. Well, my brain will take that piece of information and capture it and make it into a memory. Hopefully then I will remember that uh, that date all day. So all day I'll remember that it's Sunday. Of course, in this case, uh, in this instance, it's Thursday. It's Thursday evening. So my memory is still intact as, as far as I can tell. Of course, I could not be objective about that. It would be, have to be somebody who's objective who, who can ask those questions and ascertain whether my memory is intact or not. So the way our thoughts travel through the brain can be compared to a train. And uh, let's say people, uh, let's say are, are uh, in, in Phoenix and they don't know what the date is. They ask people uh, you know, to, to you know, and then I would ask you in, in a case of uh, you know, evaluate, evaluation and assessment, okay, uh, it, tell me what is the closest town that you remember. And they, they tell me, well, today is, uh, again, uh, Sunday or, or instead of Thursday. And uh, they tell me that it's, we are in uh, Boston instead of Phoenix. So that would alert me that there is something going on with the person's memory. So the brain of the person with, without Alzheimer's disease that the train uh, if you imagine a train uh, uh, or thoughts uh, being like a train goes from the point of entry where they boarded the train to where the brain stores the information or stops on. And with people uh, who have Alzheimer's as one form of dementia, uh, that uh, those tangles and those uh, uh, protein and enzyme abnormalities keep the train from functioning properly. So it, it's much, uh, it takes much longer for information to get from point A to point B in the brain when the track is twisted. 
And in this case, as you can see, even if the tracks are twisted and these uh, neurons are misfiring because of the tau and the tangles and the uh, enzymes, uh, so the choline, uh, then that can cause problems. So enough about that. I don't mean to turn this into a, a lecture on anatomy and physiology, but uh, it's, I think it's important for us to have some uh, concept and understand basic understanding of what happens with the brain and the health of our brain. So is in, this Im in these images, uh, you see on the right side, I believe you're seeing, the, seeing it uh, correctly, not in a mirrored image. The right side, the brain is atrophied. And see this? So this is the frontal part of the brain, the vision center of the brain. And same here. And you can, we can see that there are visual changes in the brain and there are all these cells, there's atrophy, there's shrinking. The, the brain is shrinking. Uh, similar to muscle loss, uh, this is in the brain, the brain loss. And if we take a, a slide, uh, slice of the brain, uh, this is the normal brain. You see how full it is versus the Al Alzheimer's disease brain in the lower image. And when I use my pointer, does that show on your side? Okay, great. So again, uh, that's more, we, we'll talk about more uh, symptoms of Alzheimer's. So we know that there are new problems with words in speaking or writing, and there may be misspellings. And I'm not talking about people who, uh, you know, speak English as a second language or another language that's uh, a second language. But even in our uh, native tongue, uh, we need to be looking for some misspellings and a loss of ability to retrace those steps uh, in writing. Uh, there, I touched on this earlier, there is a decrease in judgment. So they usually, we, tend, we start uh, using poor judgment uh, in our daily affairs. Uh, there is withdrawal from uh, social activities and there are mood changes and personality changes. So the, let's talk about vascular dementia, which is another form of dementia. The vascular dementia it affects the cortical region of the brain, the top part of the brain, whereas some others affect the subcortical or the lower part of the brain. And we'll talk about that. So this is just a, a graphic to talk to show us that the, the, the circuitry again is affected, that train or the circuitry in, in electrical circuitry, where there's learning circuitry, uh, impact, motivation, circuit impact, and there's motor circuit impact. Motor meaning our, our movements. And we'll talk about uh, a type of dementia that particularly affects motor function. So let's talk about other forms of dementia. And there, we do say dementias because there are, it's plural uh, and there are different forms of it. Now, there are Atypical dementias, there are mixed picture dementias. Atypical dementias can be caused by genetic syndrome, such as the Huntington disease that I mentioned, uh, alcohol misuse and abuse uh, that can lead to uh, a condition or dis disease called Wernicke's or Korsakoff. And there are drug toxins exposures like heavy metals, pesticides, bleach, that many people use to clean their home. Uh, perf some perfumes can cause that. Any thing that's synthetic and not unnatural can, uh, can cause toxicity, neurotoxicity. And uh, there are white matter. That we, know we, we, all, we may have heard there's a white matter and the gray matter. So there are white matter diseases, depression, uh, infections, certain infections such as HIV, AIDS, Lyme disease, uh, syphilis and uh, the other type of sexually transmitted diseases. Uh, incidentally, syphilis has become increasingly common among older adults, aging adults, 65 years and older. And yes, older adults do engage in sexual activity. 
And unfortunately, um, sometimes in nursing homes, they, uh, they have multiple partners and they're at risk for uh, sexually trans transmitted diseases. And syphilis can cause cognitive uh, decline and, and problems. Parkinson's, but 40% um, of people who have uh, this atypical type of dementia uh, also have Parkinson's. And um, we also will talk about uh, that in detail as well. Um, so there's also mixed picture dementias and those can have multiple uh, uh, causes and can start uh, they can start with one, for example, one type of dementia, and then another type of dementia can be added. And uh, they have uh, other long life, lifelong issues and they develop dementias. And uh, those are, we will, again, we'll talk about some of those in detail. Uh, so mental illness, personality disturbances, substance abuse, those can also cause a mixed picture dementia um, or their comorbid factors. This is, uh, again, a depiction of uh, what I've been talking about in terms of uh, Alzheimer's being one of many forms of dementia. Um, so dementia is an umbrella term. And under that umbrella, we have Alzheimer's disease, uh, which there, you know, in, in, incidentally, there has been cases of young onset al Alzheimer's, and they're, they're, they're also late onset or late start. Um, uh, Alzheimer's. There's vascular dementia, as we talked about earlier, Lewy body dementia, which uh, I've been uh, urged by many of our uh, friends in the community to talk about that some, so I'll uh, dive in deeper into that. And there's frontal uh, temporal, FTD, or frontal temporal type dementia, and then there are other types of dementia, uh, which is the mixed picture that I also mentioned uh, earlier. So Alzheimer's, here are the public faces of dementia. Uh, Alzheimer's uh, and, and dementia is an equal opportunity uh, disease. So these are all the people who uh, whom we may know of, especially those of us who've been around and are baby boomers. Uh, we may remember uh, like Perry Como and, and Rita Hayworth. Uh, I know my uh, parents loved Hita, Rita Hayworth in the old classical black and white movies. Uh, most recently, we, we heard about Glenn Campbell, who uh, died in 2017. So these are some of the people that uh, are public figure, figures, celebrities that we may have heard of. And here are, again, some pictures of people that we may know, or you may know, uh, who suffered from Alzheimer's and uh, died as a, as, as a result of complications of Alzheimer's. Anybody know who this statute is of? So you might put your answers in the uh, chat box. And this, do you remember this lady who used to be part of the Golden Girls TV sitcom series? So this individual, I don't know if there were any responses, any guesses about this picture. This is Sugar Ray Leonard, the boxer, the champion boxer. So let's talk about uh, frontotemporal uh, dementia and uh, as another type of dementia. So frontotemporal dementia, it's also referred to uh, in short as FTD. Um, it's, it's typically at a younger age, it starts at a younger age, and it's, it affects the frontal part of the brain, uh, which manages or is responsible for impulse and behavior control. So people, the person who has frontotemporal uh, type dementia can be impulsive, they can do things uh, on a whim without thinking about the consequences, and they have difficulty controlling their behavior. So they may engage in some really erratic, uncharacteristic behaviors, in, especially in the public. So 
typically dementia doesn't present, uh, this type of dementia doesn't present with memory issues. So these are, this is why I'm getting, uh, diving in deeper because it's important to have a, a, a general idea of these things because you may, some of us may think, well, so-and-so that I knew uh, never exhibited any memory loss. So how could they have had dementia? So this is a type of dementia that may not necessarily involve uh, memory problems. So they tend to, you know, say unexpected, rude, odd things. And again, it's odd, maybe uncharacteristic of them. Um, they have no ability to filter through their processes. Of course, now, uh, you know, people, um, you know, my wife uh, tends to tell me from time to time that I have no filter and I tend to speak my mind. I'm not talking about that kind of filter. It's talking, I'm talking about things that are really uh, out of character and inappropriate uh, socially. And they're in, disinhibited in their behaviors around food, drink, sex, emotions, and, they're in, and in, their, in their actions. So you, you can imagine how consequential uh, that type of a, this type of a dementia can be when they have behavioral issues. It may include some obsessive compulsive uh, uh, behaviors. In other words, they brood or, or they obsessive, obsessive means in the, they think about something, they can't let go of it. They keep uh, ruminating about those thoughts. And compulsion is the behavior part. They may compulsively buy things. Um, and again, there are differential, differential diagnoses for this. What I mean by that is that there may be other causes for that. It's not just dementia. So not, not everybody who's uh, engaging in compulsive shopping or compulsive uh, other types of compulsive behavior has dementia. It may be other things. Uh, so uh, they may be unable to find words. Uh, they may be vague in their description of the words or what they're trying to say and communicate and their comprehension or their ability to understand um, uh, is limited. They're unable to understand sound um, and sometimes sounds sound different to them and it, uh, they may, in, in response to that, they may speak things, words that are nonsense. Um, so they, can't, they may not be able to name uh, items. Uh, they may engage in, in what the uh, scientifically, clinically talk, uh, referred to as word salad. In other words, they throw in a bunch of uh, hodgepodge words in talking and it doesn't make sense, but uh, that's what they do. So 25% uh, of, uh, you know, interestingly, 25% of them never develop a global dementia or a cognitive problem. And let's see, as I mentioned earlier, Alcohol-related dementia, uh, which is caused by Wernicke or Korsakoff syndrome, is real. Um, it's possibly caused by the neurotoxicity, again, the uh, toxin from the excessive alcohol consumption that affects the nerve cells in the brain. And there's also other causes of uh, this type of dementia can be vitamin B1 and thiamine deficiency. So that's why, again, it's important to uh, test and evaluate, um, examine, and properly diagnose the, what's going on, what the underlying cause is, not just based on symptoms. But symptoms um, are decreased ability to learn new things. Uh, you know, they lose a a interest in valued activities, people, and life. So if the person is becoming more and more uh, isolating and uh, removing themselves from social interaction. I'm not talking about what was, uh, you know, caused by the pandemic and uh, the situation that we are all living in. Those are situational uh, re reactions. I'm talking about a, a normal uh, set in a normal setting, normal progress or process in life. They en end up being isolating, or what we call it in Farsi. Monzabi, um, Monzabi Shodan, um, or becoming a hermit, right? So again, their judgment can be impaired. Their, their mood can be fluctuating and shifting rapidly. They may have 
problems with balance and coordination. That's important. That's key. Um, so because it's a, it, the, those toxins are affecting the certain parts of the brain that uh, the motor part of the brain that's responsible for balance and coordination. Um, so let's see. I mentioned Down syndrome. Uh, uh, Farsi میگیم عقب افتادگی or uh, mongolism. Uh, Down syndrome is something that uh, I'm sad to say in our culture, we don't talk about it. I know it exists. I know that in our community here in Arizona, we have families who have Down syndrome children, but uh, it, it's sort of a taboo. And I certainly hope that rather than uh, hiding it and, and uh, being ashamed of it, I hope that we can talk about it and reach out and uh, get help uh, for these uh, members of our community. So it probably affects the vast majority of uh, this type of uh, dementia, affects the mass, vast majority of people with Downs and it's due to premature aging and which is there's an onset earlier. And uh, in this picture, uh, we are looking at two individuals who look older than they actually are. So that's premature aging. And, uh, you know, they, they, this num they, they, uh, they used to, the notion used to be that people with Down syndrome don't live long, but we know we have people who are in their 40s and 60s. So as they age, even in their 40s, 40, mid 40s, the, the numbers increase dramatically with people uh, with dementia. And some people uh, experience it very rapidly. It starts really rap rap fast, uh, probably maybe in between one and three years. And some people it takes three to 10 years. So the progression is slower. And they frequently have other medical problems. So they're co occurring or um, the accompanying medical problems. Let me, I'll, if, so there, it's, some people know this as dual diagnoses or the, there are multiple diagnoses, uh, but uh, you know, again, Down syndrome being one of these, one of these types, there are attention losses at first, uh, not memory. So the, the first thing that goes is attention. And I'm not talking about, uh, what we loosely throw out and refer to and in our conversations nowadays that ADD, oh, you're, you have ADD, your attention deficit disorder. I'm not talking about that. You know, we, we're talking about a gradual loss or sudden loss of attention among these people. Self-care, uh, their ability to self-care, take care of, of themselves is damaged early. Um, they may have seizures and, uh, or at least start having seizures where they, in the past, they may not have had seizures. Um, they may have uh, memory uh, issues uh, uh, in, in when, when the, there's physical exams, uh, and, or uh, oftentimes, unfortunately, the memory uh, deficit or memory decline is not picked up during uh, a physical examination by a primary care provider. Uh, and uh, you know, we know, all of us know that an average primary care doctor spends anywhere from five to 10 minutes if you're lucky. So it's very difficult for them to pick up on memory deficits during that visit. Uh, increased uh, increased uh, uh, atypical or not normal behaviors. Uh, there are uh, their tolerance changes uh, uh, among people who have, have uh, Downs and um, you know, they, these behaviors, even though you plan with them and plan to help them change the behaviors, they can't help it. They, they're unable to change those behaviors. Uh, and that's what, by the way, that's what I mean, young dementia. There are people who have young dementia. And um, if we get a chance, we'll talk about it. There's a lot of information I'm co uh, covering here. I uh, appreciate your patience. Uh, but let's, okay. So uh, in he here, I'm talking about uh, potential contributing factors uh, to dementias 
uh, before doing that, I actually want to uh, talk about Lewy body dementia because I've, I've been asked by many of uh, our community members to ask about. Lewy body dementia, uh, the easiest way to remember it is like a mix of Alzheimer's, so memory deficits and Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's, if you've ever known anybody with Parkinson's are those people who have movement disorders. They, they have the tremors and it's pronounced tremor. Uh, and uh, they have balance issues. A person for your reference with Parkinson's disease was Muhammad Ali, uh, the famous boxer. He had Parkinson's disease, of course, as a result of the traumatic brain injury, uh, you know, the po constant ponding into the, in the, into the head, into the cranium. So uh, that if you mix Parkinson's, the movement disorder part of the brain, uh, which is in the subcortical, the motor part of the brain, and the top part of the brain, remember I showed you that picture uh, with Alzheimer's, that's what the closest, uh, I think that an easiest way to this explain Lewy body dementia. There are, on, the, the sad thing about Lewy body dementia is that they have visual hallucinations. And they see, they may see animals or children or people or insects, uh, things that are not there. They may uh, notice a picture on the wall that is talking to them or it's uh, it, it's really vivid and is tell, telling them or doing things that they see in the picture. And they sometimes they may leave that environment that's why people with Lewy body dementia may uh, step out of a gathering and go sit outside for hours and sometimes they sit unfortunately in, in the heat in Arizona they sit in the heat for a long period of time uh, which is dangerous right but they they're sitting there because they're removing themselves from those visual hallucinations visual things that are disturbing them uh, there are Fine motor problems, uh, again, typically with the hands. Uh, there's swelling in the hands, there's uh, shaking, tremors in the hands, and uh, sometimes they have uh, rigidity and, uh, and syncope or syncope, which, you know, they can uh, go unconscious and uh, have those types of problems. They, ha they have, uh, they may talk about nightmares and uh, their sleep pattern is uh, significantly, gravely uh, affected. So they have inability to sleep. Uh, they may have some delusional thinking, thinking in a way, such a way that the thing about things that are not really, they're not real. Um, they, they may have uh, changes or fluctuations in their ability, uh, abilities to, uh, you know, in terms of what they can do. Uh, so it, it can come and go, it's fluid. Uh, what they used to be able to do, they may not, uh, they may no longer be able to do it, but then it's, uh, it comes and goes. It's, it's not uh, uh, static. The, there are also uh, their, their responses to uh, medications can be extreme and strange. So what one take, one may take a medication and uh, they have a normal expected reaction based on research and studies, scientific studies. People with a Lewy body may have really strange, extreme reactions to those medications. They can become toxic. So they may uh, have a low tolerance for uh, whether it's alcohol or other chemicals or in their environment. And they and have difficulty when, when they become toxic, they may have difficulty moving. And that's what oftentimes uh, one of the factors that leads to their death. And uh, so with that, I wanted to talk about that more. And then let me also talk about, before again, we talk about contributing factors. Let me quickly talk about another type of uh, uh, dementia, which is caused by chronic traumatic encephalopathy or the, the brain uh, 
uh, is is sick, it becomes ill because uh, and doesn't function due to uh, chronic trauma, recurrent trauma over time. Not just talking about one time, for example, when we are playing soccer and we use our head to hit the ball. No, I'm talking about chronic, recurrent, uh, ongoing, uh, long-term trauma. Um, we see this among veterans, uh, people who have been exposed to uh, head injuries, uh, football players, boxers. Uh, so uh, this is caused by, again, repeated uh, repetitive head injury. It usually affects the frontal part. So the, you, may, you may see similar things as the frontotemporal uh, uh, dementia, so frontal lobe is affected with, again, our impulse behaviors, our vision center, and uh, sometimes it's very rapid uh, in progression, so it becomes worse really quick uh, into an Alzheimer uh, state or pattern. And it uh, can also rapidly uh, progress into becoming a full-blown frontotemporal dementia that we talked about earlier. Uh, there are 10 signs of uh, early warnings. Let's say, you know, when we see that warning light on our dashboard in our car that tells us, oh, the radiator is overheating, the temperature of the engine is increasing, or, you know, your maintenance is due. You know, there are there are warning signs that we can tell that, hey, it's time for us to further evaluate and dig into this. So memory loss um, for new information and uh, people who repeatedly uh, uh, or frequently repeat themselves. Uh, again, there, we need to, we need to uh, weigh this uh, with other types of conditions and personalities. There are people who tend to repeat themselves all the time, but that doesn't necessarily mean uh, it's dementia, but it's a warning sign. Uh, they have difficulty doing familiar, but uh, difficult tasks. They have difficulty money, managing money. Uh, they have difficulty managing their medications, which would be important, right? Uh, they would be, they, they have difficulty driving. And that's why it's important for us to be aware of these warning signs, because that may be time for us to uh, talk with a doctor, with a provider, and see if uh, that person really needs to be driving out there. Uh, we, we have heard, especially in Arizona, with uh, drivers who are going uh, against in the wrong direction on a one-way street or highway, and there have been fatalities because of that. Oftentimes, it's been people who have dementia. Um, war, again, the, the judgment tends to get worse. Uh, their difficulty, uh, sol they have difficulty solving problems or reasoning when we, when we, we try to reason with them and they misplace things. Again, not talking about misplacing my car keys, but if I have my shoes in, in the refrigerator, that's not normal, right? Okay, so uh, the changes in the mood and the behavior and their changes in their personality. Again, if you see ch changes in the personality and they're withdrawn, uh, they're withdrawing from activities, uh, things that they used to be, especially things that they used to take interest in, then those are warning signs. Uh, there is a term that's called, I think it's, I would be remiss if I did not mention this, it's called MCI. I'm not talking about the old, uh, a telephone company, but mild cognitive impairment, MCI. And this is usually something that starts, it's a, uh, it's the beginning or the, those warning signs that, of, uh, telling, that tell us that there is a problem with the person's ability to uh, process information and, and uh, use information. And there's problems with speaking, behaving, so on and so forth. So there's usually problems with memory, with their language, with their behavior, and their motor skills, especially the fine motor skills. If they were, do, they were used to doing things with hands, with their hands, they may have difficulty deal, doing things, those things with their hands. Um, it is not life-threatening at this stage, but uh, it's definitely a, a warning sign, and it needs to be uh, looked at further. Um, there, 
there are other conditions and I used uh, this picture of a dentist because oral health is key to our whole body, mind, health. And oftentimes uh, dentists are, who are trained in oral health can pick up early signs of something going wrong. Something going on, especially like let's say, for example, heart disease or uh, diabetes. Uh, if we're uh, routinely visiting a dentist when we're supposed to and take care of our oral health, dentists are wonderful partners in us maintaining our health. Now, uh, let me also see if there is uh, the slides are not. Moving again here. Okay, so right there we go. Okay, so in uh, Alzheimer's disease patients, uh, they they tend to exhibit a neuroinflammation. In other words, swelling or inflammation of the nerves uh, that are consistent with infection, including uh, the microglial activation, which is part part of the uh, body's response to inflammation uh, that gets activated. And uh, there is, you know, there are cytokines that are uh, uh, altered. Cytokines uh, are responsible for not only inflammation, but uh, are they are responding. To, it's, it's a body's way of protecting us against stress and against inf inflammation or attack against our whole body system. Uh, it's sort of like uh, a, a malware or a virus that comes into the computer and uh, our uh, virus, antivirus or malware protection uh, starts sounding alarms uh, that something is going on, something is are attacking, is attacking our body. But that happens with the cytokines in our brain too. And in, 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 and in our mouth, especially. So infectious, infectious agents have been found in the brain, uh, such as this... Um, you know, uh, the, the porphyromus uh, gingivitis or gingivalis. Uh, gingivalis is uh, the, the infection in the mouth uh, that has been uh, postulated to be uh, involved in uh, Alzheimer's disease. We talked about Lewy body. Some of the people that uh, you know, uh, you know, again, public figures, uh, celebrities that who know that you know, have had Lewy body dementia, uh, Robin Williams most recently, uh, who and, uh, unfortunately and regrettably uh, ended up taking his own life because he was having, uh, you know, really uh, bothersome uh, uh, visual hallucinations and hallucinations that were really uh, impacting his life. Um, you know, I don't know if, how many of you know this gentleman with his daughter here. Uh, some of you may remember Casey Kasem, uh, who used to play the, all these uh, top 40s uh, songs uh, in many years ago. And uh, anybody know this gentleman, Ted Turner, the Turner broadcast, and uh, you know, some uh, Athletes, again, it affects everybody, uh, and regardless of their uh, profession, regardless of their education, uh, regardless of, uh, you know, their socioeconomic status. Lewy body dementia, again, it affects the cerebral cortex, the top part of the brain, whereas, and Parkinson's, which is part of Lewy body, so it's, again, it's a combination of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. So Parkinson's affects the substantus uh, Niagara in, uh, in, in the brain, this part of the brain and the subcortical level. So when the two combine is what are combined is what affects or becomes Lewy body and is diagnosed as Lewy body uh, dementia. In Lewy body, I think another finding that's interesting is that uh, uh, they have uh, a decreased uh, production of dopamine 
Uh, whereas in a healthy person, in the at the synaptic uh, neuron, uh, there there is a normal uh, production of dopamine. So in Parkinson's, there is there is a loss or declination of the dopamine, and that is what leads to movement disorders and and balance issues. Okay, so let me. We've talked about the various uh, types of uh, categories of Alzheimer's disease. So I, I'll, I'm going to fast track through this with your permission. Um, there are three stages of Alzheimer's. There is preclinical Alzheimer's disease. There is the MCI or mild cognitive impairment uh, all as stage of Alzheimer's disease. And then there is dementia due to Alzheimer's disease. So the preclinical uh, Alzheimer's is something that we see uh, the, if, if the person is seen by a specialist, by somebody who's trained in this area, usually a neurologist. And uh, for your information, not all neurologists are trained and specialize in dementia. So it, uh, there are specially trained neurologists who deal with dementia. And um, if caught early, even a primary care a provider who does rigorous testing can pick up on the preclinical Alzheimer's uh, signs uh, about 20 years before the full-blown development of dementia. So, uh, you know, in in all in in the MCI, uh, we we see as we talked about, we see a mild uh, impairment in, in the cognitive ability or in the thinking abilities. And about 10 to 20% uh, of people over 65 years of age uh, experience mild cognitive impairment. We do not know why some people with mild cognitive impairment develop dementia uh, and others don't. So uh, the jury is still out uh, on that. Uh, a legal, legalese term to use for Mr. Goldstein's benefit, who's been patiently waiting for me to wrap this up. Um, so some causes of uh, Alzheimer's disease, uh, we have talked about uh, multiple factors uh, rather than single factors. Uh, the factors can uh, range with, uh, in between, you know, in brain changes, uh, such as accumulation of uh, protein amyloids uh, outside the neurons. So in the brain, outside of those neurons, that picture, uh, depiction of the uh, neurons that I showed you earlier, uh, showed that there's protein amyloid outside of that. There's accumulation of the uh, protein called tau uh, inside, inside the neurons. So outside of the uh, uh, neurons and inside the neurons. So outside can be the protein amyloid. Inside, inside the neuron is uh, the tau protein. And then there are genetic mutation, or uh, in Farsi we say jahesh mikone, gen jahesh mikone, as known causes of Alzheimer's. And let's talk about some risk factors for Alzheimer's. Most people with Alzheimer's are over the age of 65. Again, there have been uh, some rare cases of early age or young age onsets. Um, those have been uh, uh, discovered during autopsies of young people, uh, so in, as early as teen years. Uh, there is usually a family history of Alzheimer's, so there is genetic uh, predisposition, although, again, I will take this with a grain of salt, not everybody who has a family history uh, has had members of the family with Alzheimer's is going to develop Alzheimer's. It, sometimes it skips a person or a generation. We don't know. Uh, cardiovascular disease uh, risk factors, so heart disease, uh, uh, circula circulatory problems, um, and we'll talk about that uh, a little bit. It's, I have 718. Again, everybody's patiently waiting. Thank you. But I'm going to, uh, I think it's important to 
share and uh, impart this information uh, with everybody because I want you to be uh, agents of change and awareness in our community. So head trauma and traumatic brain injury, TBI, um, lack of education has also been linked uh, to uh, Alzheimer's as a risk factor. So um, now, if we get a chance, we, we can talk about that uh, somewhat too. Um, but studies indicate that people who are 65 years and older uh, with Alzheimer's disease survive a median of three to eight years after a diagnosis. Yet some people live as long as 20 years after the diagnosis. Why that is? Uh, variable factors. It's hard to pinpoint. It's almost like a chicken and egg thing, which came first. But on an average, a person with Alzheimer's uh, will spend more years, but 40% of their total number of years with Alzheimer's. So 40% of their years is spent with Alzheimer's in the most severe stage of the disease than in any other stage. Remember the preclinical and the mild, mild uh, cognitive impairment, MCI. So Alzheimer's disease is the sixth leading cause of death in United States. But remember, it's the fourth leading cause of chronic disease cause of death in Arizona among men, third among women, 65 years and older. So we talked about the duration already. It uh, ranges, you know, it can start 20 years uh, before it's even diagnosed. And once it's diagnosed, it can, the life expectancy can range anywhere from 10 to 20 years, uh, sometimes less. I, one of my uh, friends, unfortunately, who had uh, Alzheimer's, he was a PhD mathematician. So education obviously didn't have anything to do with it. He used his brain a lot. He, he taught mathematics, but he had Alzheimer's. And the way that, unfortunately, the way he died was due to asphyxiation or suffocation. He forgot how to swallow food. So he choked on the food and died at a young age. And that was very sad. So at the, the duration uh, really depends. So it was at a nursing, uh, a skilled nursing facility, memory, he didn't have memory care facilities about 20 years ago, but uh, that's when he died and he was at a relatively young age. So um, in evaluations, of course, uh, let's talk about the medical evaluations. It's important uh, for a primary care provider to do a structural uh, exam so the structural exam, the whole body exam, uh, look at metabolic causes, whether it's a vitamin deficiency or a thyroid uh, a de deficiency or malfunction, uh, whether, and, and check for uh, temporal uh, art arteritis, not arthritis, but arteritis. So the arteries, the temporal arteries um, that goes, goes in our temples, that, that needs to be, we listen to that. It's important to listen to that temporal artery. Sometimes take a scan, a carotid artery scan. That carotid is the, the like the the carotid artery needs to be scanned to see if there's plaques and there's buildup and blockage. Uh, they need to we need to examine for tumors such as meningiomas that can sometimes cause memory deficits and. Uh, it's important to, uh, as when it comes to blood work or lab work, to do a set rate to detect, um, uh, which is, uh, in other words, detects inflammation. Remember, we talked about how inflammation and the, the, uh, overproduction of cytokines can cause problems. Uh, and the fall rate uh, of, and sedimentation of an inflammation in the red blood and the red blood cells, um, which are called erythrocytes or red blood cells. It's important to measure the C-reactive proteins, again, in measuring uh, inflammation. So listening to the carotid uh, brew artery uh, with, with a stethoscope, that's why I have this picture here. Uh, and then uh, it's because all these are key 
to preventing a stroke uh, due to narrowing of the carotid artery and, and the decreased blood flow to the brain. And we know what, so if I were to ask you, uh, what happens with uh, a decreased or drop in blood flow to the brain and stroke? It causes what type of dementia? Remember, vascular dementia. So those are the, the lab tests we talked about. Uh, I, I would like to talk about uh, some neuropsychological testing. These are specialized testing, not psychological testing. The psychologist who, uh, clinical psychologist who measures or, or works with a person, evaluates uh, mood changes, brain changes, behavior changes, but neuropsychological evaluation where they do specialized neuro, neuropsychological testing. Um, you know, we, uh, use testing such uh, such as in, in a uh, in a cognitive uh, testing. Uh, even when we do a mini cog, uh, we can we give a, a blank piece of paper to an individual and people with uh, progressive types of dementias and Alzheimer's one for, as one form of dementia. Uh, we ask them to draw a clock, a face of a clock and then put in the numbers. And then we ask them to put the hands of the clock. Um, then we ask them to put the hand, the, the, the minute hand, the hour hand at a certain time. They're not able to do it. I uh, was thinking, I wanted to share a picture of that, uh, of something that a drawing by a patient, but uh, I didn't get a chance to get that picture for you. I apologize, but. It, it's really bizarre. It, it doesn't look anything like a clock. And there are other tests that we do. We, we ask them to name animals. We, are, we ask them to uh, uh, you know, count numbers in reverse. So there are a lot of number of things that we do at many mental status exam. And then neuropsychologists uh, basically uh, dive deeper and do uh, many other specialized tests neuropsychologically that can um, determine or identify some neuropsychological deficits or um, memory deficits. And that in, com in com combination uh, with everything else that I've talked about, as well as the pictures you see here, uh, we now can do amyloid uh, imaging. So amyloid MRIs, and we can do uh, functional MRIs and SPECT studies uh, that can uh, show the changes with the amyloids and, uh, amyloid pro and the tau. We can also uh, look at the changes in the brain functions uh, between and uh, comparing between a normal brain and a, a person who has cognitive decline. So again, the neuropsychologists have, uh, they measure memory, speed uh, in performance, their attention, focus, their creativity, their flexibility, and uh, they can measure those things in special, through specialized testing. Uh, this, for example, is a recognition of emotions uh, that they can test for. So all those are important in uh, coming up with a, uh, definitive objective diagnosis. So let's talk about some risk medication, mitigation, or in other words, uh, reducing the risks of Alzheimer's. Remember I said there is no cure for Alzheimer's or any dementia. Once a dementia progresses to a, a later stage, there is no cure for it. But there are things we can do to reduce our risk. Uh, Risk yamunum kahesh kahesh risk kahesh risk ba kar juri ke zindagi mikonim chiz qazai ke mikhorim barzish kardan so on so forth. So because these the factors I've been sharing with you over the last almost hour and a half, and you've been patiently listening, are are can have a domino effect. So you know. Uh, one of the things that I, the reason I'm using this picture here, people think that if they use word puzzles, 
they do if they play Sudoku or Sudoku or uh, do uh, crossword puzzles that that prevents them from uh, developing dementia. Well, I'm sorry to say that it does not. All the research that has been shown, unless you're uh, performing dual tasks. In other words, if you can, uh, if you can walk on a treadmill or run on a treadmill and uh, do crossword puzzles, well, your chances of benefiting from uh, that cognitively or in your, uh, with your memory is much greater than if you just do crossword puzzles or uh, uh, you know, make puzzles. Uh, or, you know, uh, there is exercise has been known to be most beneficial. Physical activity has been uh, most be be shown most benefit in terms of uh, the brain developing new pathways. So working out, exercise is important. Some of the factors, again, we've talked about that increase the risk of dementia, blood pressure, high blood pressure, high blood sugar, the belly size or abdomen or stomach size, inflammations or you know, eating, whether it's due to our diet or injury or things that cause inflammation in the body. Cortisol, uh, this chemical here, whoops, uh, sorry about that. This chemical here is induced by stress. If we are on under chronic or ongoing stress, the cortisol level that is secreted into the our system is going to be high. Genetics, of course, is another factor. And then sedentary or lifestyle, which many people, unfortunately, during this pandemic have decreased their physical activity, that is a risk factor. I'm sharing this uh, picture with you uh, because an ophthalmologist, that's usually a, a physician, an MD or a DO who is specialized in eye, in eye care. They can tell by examining your eyes whether there is narrowing of arteries and poor circulation. So it's important for us to have regular eye exams and not just for glasses by an optometrist, but by an ophthalmologist. This picture here is to remind us measuring our blood pressure, making sure that our blood pressure is normal. So remember I showed you a map, a GIS map, we call it in epidemiology and how, where the predominant counties or areas were with Alzheimer's disease. This is, an air, this, this is a map showing where the heart disease is predominant. Of course, the darker the numbers, the more cases of heart disease and mortality or death as a result of heart disease. This shows mortality or death as a result of diabetes by county in Arizona. So if we overlay, remember we used to have those uh, transparencies that we, in, in old days, we used to put on projectors in, in classes. Uh, well, if we were to take these three and put them on top of each other, then we start seeing some patterns in the counties where those uh, risk factors and uh, death rates are higher by disease. So again, Blood, checking our blood pressure, checking our blood sugar level, making sure that we don't have diabetes, getting our eye exam, you know, diabetes that affects the pancreas and uh, insulin re resistance. The reason I put this here, by the way, uh, you know, one in three American has pre-diabetes and they don't even know it. One in three. So, there is, in Arizona, there's, uh, there are over 500,000 people who have diabetes and they don't know it. So it's important to measure the blood sugar, 
make sure that we don't have prediabetes or we don't have insulin resistance. Uh, I'm not going to get into all this. There's a lot of many contributing factors to obesity or being overweight. Uh, there are many initiatives uh, across the country, uh, building integrated approaches to self-care, uh, taking health equity and, uh, and social determinants uh, uh, in, into, uh, from that lens into uh, consideration in making changes in communities. Um, mental health during the pandemic, uh, as you see, their anxiety and depressive or disorders have been on the rise among different ages throughout the pandemic. So we know that recurrent or ongoing depression and anxiety, clinical depression and anxiety can be a risk factor. Quickly, uh, these are social determinants of health. Um, we're talking about, uh, you know, let, uh, I'll share these quotes, famous quotes. Hopefully, it'll tell you what it is. It has to do with uh, where we live, where we work, where we play, where we worship, and our access to health. And health care is important in determining our health and our lifespan. Quickly, I'll tell you. Um, Zip codes, have you heard of zip codes uh, or health uh, and life expectancy by zip code? We know that in South Phoenix, compared to North Phoenix within 18 miles, the life expectancy changes by zip code up to 18 years. So people in North Phoenix, 18 miles north, live 18 years longer than those who live in South Phoenix. It's because of socioeconomic factors. It's because of access to care, access to good food, healthy food, so on and so forth. But I left this on here. I won't read through it. Hopefully you've read it. Those of you are fast readers. But one of my favorites is uh, by Dr. Jones, Camera Jones. Uh, Kamara Jones said, when a flower doesn't bloom, you fix the environment in which it grows, not the flower. So we fix the soil. We fix everything, the life that's in the soil to help bring the, li the life back to the flower, not the soil, not the flower. Along those lines, this is a map of poverty in Arizona. It is a shame and it's travesty that we have so much poverty in so many counties in Arizona. And that determines our health and our lifespan. I encourage you to make note of this website. Uh, this is a mission possible. Take this risk test for diabetes. It's a diabetes screening. It can be done in paper form or electronic. And if you go to this website, it helps us determine if you're pre-diabetic or not. So take the test, take the risk test, please. There are some resources. Uh, this is important. And perhaps what we can do is through the uh, association, uh, through the cultural center, we'll, uh, I'll share these uh, resources in hard copy so that they can share it with all the members and those who are viewers, but uh, www.findhealth.org. Uh, go to that website. It will redirect, but you can put your zip code and find help in this, uh, on that website. There are a lot of other uh, helpful resources in the community that I have listed here. I would I'd like to encourage you to watch this movie, Robin's Wish. I have put both a abbreviated uh, URL, a hyperlink to this uh, website that takes you right to the YouTube and you can watch the entire movie on YouTube. You don't even have to pay for it. You don't have to have a subscription. Everybody can watch it. I encourage you to watch this. It will sh uh, shed additional light on what Louis body is. Another amazing movie, a new movie is uh, by my, one of my favorite 
actors is Anthony Hopkins is the father. Uh, it's a new movie that has come out. It uh, focuses, it, it, you will learn about all, not dementia, but also it depicts the picture, it paints a picture of a caregiver, a dementia caregiver. Caregiving is a whole another talk and ball of wax, and they don't have time to get into it. But caregivers of, uh, suffice it to say, the caregivers of people with dementias oftentimes uh, die before the person who has dementia. Their lifespan is shortened by 30% and oftentimes die before the person who has dementia because of the stress and because of all the comorbid factors that they're dealing with in their own life. And since more women, remember third leading cause of chronic, chronic disease cause of death in Arizona, more women are, having, are dying because of dementia, well, guess what? That is changing the landscape as far as our caregivers because we, men used to die before women and women outlived men, so they would become our caregivers. But now that is shifting. So that is a whole different landscape that we should talk about. Some other, some caregivers, famous caregivers uh, that you probably recognize, uh, you know, here in these pictures. Again, caregiving is another whole issue. I uh, would like to thank you at this point for raising awareness in our community. Share this information with other people, with your family, friends, neighbors, colleagues. Uh, thank you for raising awareness. I will take some questions if we have time. And uh, I'm gonna leave this page here uh, with some important resources in the community. Uh, and I will also say that unfortunately, the Persian community, Iranians do not participate in research. We don't seek medical help. So I encourage you to do that. Uh, there are many amazing people in Arizona. We have, we have the triangle of research, um, clinical uh, care and uh, you know, teaching uh, future physicians in Arizona. It's a perfect, triangle for people who need help. So I'll stop there. And I apologize for running over. Dr. Nayeri, thank you so very, very much. No apologies needed. This was a, a most wonderful, informative presentation. I have some questions that, to get us rolling here. Uh, and right. of course, we'll take questions from the audience. But, but first of all, um, thank you. Very thorough, very informative, uh, very timely. And uh, we certainly would love to have you back for a follow-up discussion on caregiving uh, as a, as a follow-up to this presentation. I think that would also be very valuable to our community. Um, so I was, I was jotting a number of questions down while you were speaking. And the first question I, I, I had is I noted the difference and you, you just touched on this, the difference between the rates of death, right? From Alzheimer's between men and women um, in Arizona, I, I guess two questions. The first is, is that, does that generally hold true nationwide that, that the death rate for uh, women over 65 is, is um, it's, a, a, it's a higher leading cause of death? And if so, are there theories about why this is? Excellent question. Thank you. Uh, first of all, that, uh, generally, uh, I would say that in many states that that holds true and uh, that women uh, unfortunately die uh, of uh, this chronic disease before men do, uh, or, or treat, uh, the, you know, one in, uh, or three, uh, the, the, three, the third leading cause, so one in three women. Um, the, you know, the hypothesis and the, uh, the speculations are, have to do with, first of all, uh, women are now living longer, that's one, uh, contributing factor. The other, uh, and as, as men do, but women are living longer. Another thing, another factor that has been looked at uh, has to do with uh, women tend to, again, again, traditionally speaking, women uh, are, are not engaged in as many years of education as men are. So uh, education has to do with this. And by the way, do you, would you like me to uh, answer this in Farsi or in English? 
Uh, whichever you whichever a, whichever you prefer you can you can so switch I don't know, back and forth however okay, you prefer so i don't know how, what our audience uh makeup is so if there are uh more uh people who are farsi speaking and they would like me to s- explain it in farsi i will gladly do that uh, and okay uh, I'll, oh, i'll continue that you know education has something to do with it but also uh, we know that women are unfortunately living with uh, multiple chronic conditions now as uh, men do so uh, you know the endocrinologically there may that may be a factor as well and uh, women uh, tend one of the key factors in my opinion uh, in my humble opinion women tend to seek help and see their providers and and seek specialized care and are more open to talk about their problems than men are hope i and i'm going to say it in farsi اولا مهمترین چیز به نظر شخصی من اینه که خانوما خیلی بیشتر مایلن راجع به مسائلشون مشکلات تو مشکلاتشون و مسائل سلامتیشون صحبت بکنن تا در مقایسه با مردا ما مردا همش میخوایم بگیم نه هیچیمون نیست خوبیم دکتر نمیریم دنبال نمی کنیم وقتی دکتر میریم دنبال نمی کنیم پیشنهاد دکتر رو توصیه های دکتر رو و از خودمون مراقبت نمی کنیم حالا زن ها بیشتر چون مقایسه میرن صحبت میکنن راجع به این چیزها خانوما بیشتر دایگنوس میشن بیشتر تشخیص داده میشه در, در خانوما و به یه علت مهمه شد و عرض کردم که خدمت شما اولا تحصیلات مهمه چقدر, چقدر زنده میمونیم سنی که زنده میمونن خانوما داره بیشتر هی داره افزایش پیدا میکنه اینا همه عواملیه که باید در نظر گرفته بشه ولی با همه این وجود اکثرش تئوریه و حدسه کاملا نمیشه گفت چرا so i wonder um... You know, you mentioned in your in your talk that, of course, inflammation causes issues in the body. Uh, we know that it causes so many uh, many different issues, but interesting that it it has a uh, even an effect on on brain health significantly. Um, is there anything that you would recommend? You know, of course, there's no magic pill. Uh, you mentioned that, of course, these these issues don't have a, a cure. But in terms of um, ongoing maybe prevention, are there any kinds of supplements or anything that you have vitamins that you suggest that would be helpful for reducing inflammation and generally promoting brain health another excellent question uh, you know uh, you refer to things that are that are part of a whole different topic of uh, conversation but um, the first and foremost see your provider be routinely monitored uh, mm-hmm. because if you don't know what the silent issues are if you're not paying attention to the warning light on your dashboard then you don't know what's going on and you won't be able to do anything so that's first step so avvalin adam ine ke muratab aqallan aqallan sali yek bar be khusus vaqti sanemun mire bala به پزشک پزشک خانواده مراجعه کنیم اگر لازمه یک کسی که متخصص کارشناس ببینیم ببینیم و آگاه باشیم که چه, چه تحولاتی در بدنمون داره به وجود میاد و وقتی میگم بدن نه, فر... نه تنها بدنمون ولی در مغزمون در از لحاظ روحمون فکرمون همه این چیزا مهمه حالا you asked what are, what supplements the most important supplement is food the most so, the most important source of 
uh, nutrients, healthy nutrients is food. So healthy food. But also as far as inflammation, uh, omega-3, three, omega-3s, uh, uh, especially broad spectrum omegas uh, are helpful in reducing inflammation. Exercise is important and, and is, uh, is influential in reducing inflammation. Uh, but that said, uh, I know that genetically, uh, Middle Easterns are uh, prone to having uh, high cholesterol, the, the bad part of cholesterol, which is the LDL. The best way to remember LDL is lousy or bad, lousy, dense lipids. So L for lousy, so bad cholesterol, uh, we're, we tend to be high in that. And the good cholesterol, which is the HDL, the healthy density uh, lipid, uh, that's the way I remember it. So HDL is the healthy one. And that, we tend to be low in that. So that's genetic. And it may not improve by exercise or omegas uh, if we take low dose omegas. It needs to be high doses. Before I am I get to the beginning. Please. برای بهترین منشد یا ریشه که برای برای تغذیه سالم باشه و تغذیه سالمه برای برای ویتامین ها برای چیزهایی که بدنمون لازم بدنمون و مغزمون لازم داره سبزیجات و میوه ها کمک میکنن به کمک میکنن به تلامر ها تلامر ها کمک میکنن که مغزمون و اعضای بدنمون خیلی کنتر فرسوده بشن و اینم اگه در آینده موقعیتی باشه میتونیم صحبت بکنیم یه صحبت دیگه است که چجوری تلامر هامونو بلندتر کنیم یا درازتر بکنیم که سنمون حداقل سن ارگان هامون کنتر فرسوده بشن و چیزی که به انگلیسی گفتم اینه که روغن ماهی ولی اومگای سه و اومگای 6 و 9 و 7 و 9 که چند جور اومگای مختلفه میتونه کمک بکنه به اضافه ورزش کردن و تحرک داشتن نه ورزشی که اینجوری ورزش بکنیم یا اینجوری ها ورزشی که قلب ضربان قلب بره بالا عرق بکنیم و اونم زیر نظر دکتر نمیگم کسی که مثلا ورزش نکرده یه دفعه بره دو کیلومتر به دو بعد اون وقت متاسبانه یا خدا نخواسته یه دفعه مشکل قلبی پیدا کنه سنکوب بکنه یا چیز دیگه زیر نظر دکتر اگه و خیلی تدریجی اگه ورزش بکنین اونم کمک میکنه به کاهش التهاب در بدن انفلمیشن التهاب التهاب بدترین چیز برای امراض مختلف امراض مزمن و جریان خون خیلی مهمه توی این در این نقطه نظر ولی اینا رو هم گفتم بعضی همون جناتیکی به خصوص ماها که در ایرانی ها و کسایی که از شرق شرقی هستیم و جنامون یه مقدار قاطی شده کلسترولی که بده در بدن که LDL بهش میگیم اون کلسترول خیلی زیاده مقدارش و کلسترول خوب که HDL کمه و اون با اومگای خیلی کم دلزت کم به جایی نمیرسه باید زیر نظر دکتر باشه اگر بخوایم ساپلمنت استفاده بکنیم به بخشی جواب خیلی طول درازی بود نه 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 نه
Well, this might be too technical, but I, I am curious. I mean, you've, we've talked about the genetic factors. We've talked about other factors. Um, uh, I'm not obviously a medical professional, but I do find these kinds of you know genetics and, and the advances in these studies interesting. And obviously, we're in a place where we know that you know, the study of epigenetics, how environmental factors express, uh, affect gene expression. Yes. You might have a gene, but your environment will affect whether it activates or, or not, for lack of a better way of describing that. Uh, uh, what are the, what's the latest, if you could speak to that in terms of um, environmental factors that might be uh, contributing to, you know, the epigenetic sort of triggering of, of, uh, of these genes that maybe folks are carrying? Is, that, is there research being done into, into those issues? Yes. So the, another excellent question. Uh, epigenetics uh, is a huge factor in any type of uh, dis-ease or disease, right? Uh, or absence of health. Uh, we know that, the, again, the environment in which we live in, for example, if you live in an environment that is poorly lit, high crime, uh, is infested with, uh, you know, disease and you, you don't feel safe to go out and walk and, and be active, well, that uh, impacts how the gen genes express themselves. We uh, know that uh, the you know, water that we drink, the qual water quality that we drink has a lot to do with uh, our health. We know the foods that we drink or eat, I'm sorry, the foods that we eat, uh, consume, that has to do with our genes. Uh, so as I said, the telomeres are directly impacted by nutrients, the type of nutrients that we consume. Uh, Stress affects genetic expression. Um, and we can change these expressions, the genetic expressions, uh, by changing our environment, changing our lifestyle, reducing our risk factors that we have talked about. So it is, you know, how it impacts dementia. Uh, I, unfortunately, there's not any uh, solid publication in that uh, realm, but we do know that one thing that definitely uh, impacts neuroplasticity or uh, the way uh, nerves communicate and the neural, neuronal pathways has to do with, <coughs> excuse me, has to do with uh, exercise, mm -hmm. physical activity. So there, is, there are published studies that show exercise uh, can create new, uh, new you know, uh, form new, uh, you know, there is new, there are, there's evidence for neuroplasticity and changes in the, in the brain and the neural pathways. Allah Farsi be yam besari. Yes, please. So Allah the yam omade bu. Because I have to say, I have to say, I برای سوشال دیترمیننس آف هلت که گفتم منطقه‌ای که زندگی می‌کنیم اگر امن نباشه اگر آلوده باشه اگر امن نباشه که بریم بیرون شب راه بریم قدم بزنیم چراغ نباشه که بیشتر همش نشسته باشیم جایی که فعال باشیم اون در جوری که جنامون خودشون رو توصیف میکنن تاثیر خواهد داشت تغذیهی که میکنیم غذاهایی که میخوریم در توصیف جن دارم دارم تو مغز خودم الان ترجمه میکنم ترجمهش درست نمیدونم این باشه ولی اونجوری که خودشون رو توصیف میکنن اون تاثیر داره در جن ها آبی که میخوریم و میگم مهمترین چیز که خیلی روش تغییر شده پژوهش شده تغییر شده و به ثبت رسیده اثر تحرک و برزش اثر برزش برزشی که ایروبیک باشه یعنی زربان قلب بره بالا عرق بکنیم این اثرش خیلی مثبت در مغز و در اون 
گفتم توی صحبت هم بودم مثل یه قطار میمونن این نورونال پاثوی این قطار به هم بست باشه و بتونه از نقطه الف به نقطه ب برسه و چجوری برسه این خیلی تاثیر خواهد داشت یه چیزی که خانومم ورده امداد گردو گردو دیدین گردو که الان این گردوها همه خود شده است ولی گردو اگر دیدی باشین شبیه مغزه اگر یک درستش رو به نگاه بکنین شبیه مغزه و برای مغز خیلی خوبه اون اون سرایی که توی گردو هستن برای مغز خیلی خوبه البته گرمی هم میکنه آدم گرمی ممکنه و گلو درد میاره اینا ولی اگر گردو بخوره آدم هر روز نمیگم جلوی آزهایمر و دیمنشا رو میگیره ولی اینا همه کمک میکنه که ریسک های زوال عقل رو کاهش بده It's nearly it's eight o'clock, so I, I'm going to try and merge maybe a couple of them. Sure. Um, you know, in our society, both in society in the United States, but also in particular in Middle Eastern and, and, and Iranian culture, mental health, generally speaking, is taboo. Uh, all, all different. And, and we've talked about some of those. You touched on some of those as risk factors, right? Anxiety, depression. Um, given that mental health generally is taboo, and we also, you know, don't really discuss um, even these aspects of mental health frequently enough, right? This, what we are talking about tonight. Uh, what do you recommend? I mean, how, how do you recommend approaching this sensitive subject with maybe a friend or a family member um, to try and help out? Significant. You know, I, I was looking for the, usually there's a, re, yeah, there, there's a reaction button on Zoom. I was going to uh, react with a heart, uh, you know, out of love. Uh, Salman Jun, I, I love your question uh, and thank you for asking that because mental health has historically been a taboo in our culture. Uh, we don't talk about it. We tend to brush it under the rug and pretend that elephant is not in the kitchen, so to speak, uh, the phrase goes. Uh, and we're only hurting ourselves by engaging in that type of taboo and, and uh, secret secrecy. Depression, anxiety, many of the mental health issues, psychiatric disorders are no different than high blood pressure, hypertension, diabetes, uh, or any type of other disease. It is time for us as a community, as a culture, to embrace the, the mental health, psychological, psychiatric disorders as just, just the same and equally the same as other health conditions. Why, you ask, it is important, especially during these times where people have been Isolating, they've been lonely. I wish we had time. I would share this video. It's an animation video that won uh, awards. Uh, it's about how we care for one another, for our elders uh, in our community. Uh, how everything you know, we have, we have also unfortunately adapted and become uh, multicultural uh, by by losing those values. We have amazing values in our culture uh, that we need to embrace and, and maintain that cultural identity. But then there are things that are healthier, for example, just as you said, talking about mental health issues. If the person is depressed, if a person has anxiety, if the person has bipolar disorder or manic depression, if the person has Schizophrenia, which uh, incidentally, schizophrenia is a neurological disorder, a neurological brain disorder that can also cause uh, cognitive disorders. It's important to talk about these things to get help because suicide rate among teenagers in Arizona, I have no statistics or numbers among our 
that the Persian community or Middle Eastern cultures, but suicide rates in among uh, adolescents, teenagers in Arizona during this pandemic over the last 14 months has increased by 67%. Wow. So to me, as a health professional and as a public health advocate and professional, one life lost is too many. So please talk about mental health issues. Talk with a counselor. Talk with a friend. First, if the friend is, uh, you know, open to talking about it and I can help you connect with a counselor, a mental health counselor, with a psychologist, or even seeing a psychiatrist, it's okay because being having a, having those conditions doesn't mean that you're crazy. Those are terms that we have used. Uh, inappropriately in referring to somebody who is ill. So now if I may say it in Farsi, please. Uh, it's a long answer. I apologize. I don't know how to ask to say it. But no, it's important. No need to apologize. Uh, مسائل روانی روحی روانی صحبت نمی کنی درست نیست صحبت کنی برای اینکه اگه صحبت بکنیم یعنی اینکه یه چیزی یه،, یه مشکلی در اون خانواده هست حتی راجب دان سیندروم و راجب کسایی که بهشون منگولن عقب افتادن جوری که حتی راجبشون صحبت کنیم عقب افتاده خب ده they have challenges, they have limitations یعنی یه مقدار هر کسی هر شخصی تو زندگی یه محدودیت هایی داره من محدودیت دارم همه کار نمیتونم بکنم من نمیتونم برم جرای مغز بکنم نمیتونم برم مثلا شمپلاتین ماشین رو عوض کنم آیا این دلیل میشه که من عقب افتادم؟ نه یه محدودیت هایی دارم همه محدودیت دارم ولی راجع به این مسائل روحی روانی اگه صحبت نکنیم تو جامعه امون اگر کمک نطلبیم نخواهیم باعث خواهد شد یکی یکی از چیزایی که میشه اولا باعث رفتن بالا فشار خون بالا رفتن باعث استرس زیاده استرس زیاد فشار خون رو میبره بالا کورتیزول رو میبره بالا استرس زیاد افسرده میکنه آدمو استرس زیاد باعث میشه آدم فراموش فراموشی حالا میگم نه که زوال عقل فراموشی آدم پیدا میکنه بعد استرس میدونیم که سایتوکانا رو اون مو... اون کمیکالا چیزای شیمیایی که در بدن هست که میخواد به جنگ با یه چیزی که داره حمله میکنه بهش و التهابو بیاره پایین زیادش میکنه حد, حد, حد معمول میبردش بالا و اون باعث میتونه می، می، می باعث رفتن بالا قند خون بشه قند خون وقتی میره بالا انسولین هی انسولین درست ترشو نمیشه موازنش به هم میخوره توازن باید بگم ببخشه توازنش به هم میخوره باعث میشه که در, در مرور زمان مرض قند وجود بیاد اینا همه چیکار میکنه ریسک زوال عقل رو میبره بالا بنابراین باید صحبت کنیم نگیم میبینیم یه حالا تو مثلا تو فرهنگ ما به جای فیل بگیم مثل شطور مثل اینکه توی اتاق نشیمنمونه یا تو آشپزخونه مونه هر کی میاد از دور این شطور یا فیل میره این ور اون ور قاشق چنگال بر میداره آب بر میداره بشقاب بر میداره از زیرش میره از روش می پلکا می زده از روش می پره ولی هیچ کس نمیگه بابا این شطور یا این فیلی که توی آشپز خونه است یا تو اتاق نشیمنه چیه تو مسائل روحی روانی بر ما اینجوری شده همش میخوایم جاروش کنیم زیر فرش یا منکرش بشیم خواهش میکنم از ازتون تمنا میکنم منکرش نشیم هیچ فرقی با مرض قند با فشار خون با مرض قلب با چی بگم با مسائل قددی 
مثل تیروید یا هورمونی یا سرطان نداره مسائل روی روانی هم مثل یک سرطان میمونه که سرط... کشنده خواهد Okay. Um, well, I will. We have one question from. Yeah. Again, I have so many other questions, and we will certainly have to have a follow up because um, very, very informative. But I want to make sure I ask the question from the audience before sure. we conclude for the evening. Go for uh, it. And that question related to. Um, you were speaking earlier. Uh, the question is that. They wanted to confirm. Did you say that genetically Iranians are more predisposed to high levels of the lousy protein, the LDL that you uh, uh, cholesterol, excuse me, that you um, referenced? And uh, can you point to any research as guidance? I, I so yes and no. The yes it has to do with part of the question in terms of uh, the the genetic predisposition. They're more genetically prone. Uh, so there's a difference between predisposition, which means you know, everybody is, uh, or more people have, uh, have it than not. But mm -hmm. we, we are genetically, because of our uh, ancestral background, uh, we have a more, there's more propensity to have that, uh, to have mm -hmm. a higher levels of lousy cholesterol, uh, uh, dense lipids. Lipids. Um, there is a no in terms of so no. The no part was that it, it's not that majority of us have it, but many of us do have it. So it's better to get tested and find out. Just like many of us have thalassemia, camp unida. Or in other words, unless you test for it and look for it, you don't know. It, these are silent symptoms that can lead to other problems. So as far as a study, uh, the uh, International Journal of Preventive Medicine uh, published in uh, April of 2014 uh, talks about that, uh, talks about uh, hypercholesterolemia uh, with high LDL, LDL, the lousy dense uh, lipids and the high lower uh, Uh, healthy or high density lipids, HDL. So that's this reference study. Now, would you like me to say it in Farsi or try to say it in Farsi? Sure, yes, go okay. ahead. So, I'm going to say that the Iranian or the Sharia in this problem is that cholesterol LDL is very low, HDL is very low. خوب با... کلسترول خوبه نوع خوب بشه پایینه ولی جن... از لحاظ ژنتیکی و اگه نگاه بکنیم خیلی همون اینو داریم حالا خیلی همون نمیتونم بهتون بگم 10 درصد یا 20 درصد همون الان به ذهنم نمیاد it's part of, it's part of aging memory loss به ذهنم نمیاد ولی به خاطر سن درست یادم در... نمیاد چند درصد ولی Uh, بهتره که دنبالش بکنیم و تحقیق بکنیم به دکتر... وقتی میریم دکترمون رو میبینیم دکتر خانواده رو پزشکر خانواده رو میبینیم معمولا این آزمایش خونی که میدن میتونن بگن که HDL مون چیه LDL مون چیه تریگلیسرایل مون چیه توتال کولسترول مون چیه و باید تمام این رو با هم مقایسه کنن نه فقط یکیشو و اه، 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 نشریه ای که چاپ شده بود توی جورنال بین المللی پریونتیو مدیسنه که میگه جلوگیری جلوگیری پیشگیری میکنن برای طب پیشگیری کردن یا جلوگیری کردن در سال در آوریل 2014 این به نشر رسیده بود <laughs> okay. All right, Dr. Nayeri, thank you so very, very much for joining us today. Uh, I My learned pleasure. a lot. I'm hoping the audience learned a lot and took, a, took something away from this. I know that they did. We appreciate your guidance and uh, suggestions on the resources. Of course, we will share that with our members and our volunteers and uh, the community. And we will look forward to having you back for uh, an ongoing conversation about 
brain health and, um, and different aspects of this issue that is very, very important to all of us. My, uh, my pleasure. Uh, the, you know, I would like to also in closing share that uh, there, there was a, the, in terms of the LDL, HDL predisposition or propensity, uh, the article, uh, it was published in Iran and it was, it took, it, they took a meta-analysis of the, uh, of the systemic review, which means they took uh, all these journals and publications and they did a meta-analysis of that, uh, those studies uh, in, uh, it was a, I, actually the publication was in Iran. And I, uh, to Iran, yet Nashri, the chop residue would, you know, by the Sudan, a meta-analyst card, the Sudan, Tamomain, Tahirotu Pajuishoro, the Unombe in that Jesu Sudan, in Hamshi Chizi has. In again, just a bit in in Tamomain, resource I get, goes to them, slide or hat, uh, your barrage, or my barrage, or Scandarion, Mifresam, I got Juri Bosch, Joy Boschekino, uh, Barre. شهروندان بذارین که برای اینکه مهم این و خواهش میکنم ازتون از این ریسورس ها استفاده بکنید ما ایرونی ها این کارا رو نمی کنیم شما هم دارین پول مالیات میدین استفاده بکنید so thank, thank you. you very much yeah we will absolutely we publish it on our facebook page and um, distribute it in any other way we can it's a pleasure being with you. Thank you, everybody, for your patience. And uh, thank you for an amazing evening with all the wonderful questions. Uh, you know, I, I should, I sh uh, if anybody didn't know, they would have, they could easily think that I paid you or sent you these questions to ask in advance. <laughs> but I assure you there was, well. that there was no such thing. <laughs> so I, I appreciate all your questions. Uh, thank you. Me? Yes, likewise, uh, I, I appreciate the, uh, interesting subject matter and and it's always good to hear from somebody who is really passionate about what they're doing and and cares for the community so we appreciate you and we appreciate thank your time you. and we look forward to having a, a more conversation together in the future look forward to it have a wonderful evening have a good night take care you too